The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks go. Things have gone well in Vancouver this season. In fact, some might say extremely well. And one of those things that the team has been healthy, well, guess what? Carson Soucy is now expected to miss up to two months with an injury. Does that mean the Canucks are getting Nikita Zadorov? More on that next year on Locked On Canucks. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks, and also a Canucks writer over at Daily Hive Vancouver. Before we dive into the episode, we got to thank you for tuning in to Locked On Canucks. It's your team every goddamn day, baby. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Coming up on today's episode, we're going to talk about the Carson Susie injury and whether the Canucks need to target a defenseman uh, in his absence. They've been rumored to be targeting big old Nikita Zadorov. Is that the defenseman the Canucks really should be targeting? Uh, also going to touch on the Elias Pettersson contract situation. Patrick Levine had some comments about that. Kyle dropped a little a little episode last night. You can check out his contract predictions and leave your predictions there. And a chance to win a couple of slick t-shirts. And finally, we're going to get to the Cam Neely, former Canuck of the week. Uh, but let me introduce my co-host first. Uh, he's not my former co-host. He's my current co-host, Kyle Bowen. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Going to the game tonight. Uh, Trevor Baggs is going to be there, too. We're not going to be together. In fact, I'm sitting alone. I'm sitting alone. It is what it is. I'm kind of... I'm kind of living the dream because I feel as if when I was younger, this is something that I truly did envision, and that's going to Vancouver Canucks games alone. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just love hockey so much, sitting down, watching the game. And, bro, I might have a, I might have a brewski today or I might have another coffee. I feel as if I've seen people drink coffee at the game now. Tim Hortons is there now? Maybe? Who knows? Anyways, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, your Canucks every day. Now, before we get into all this Nikita Zadorov talk, maybe we'll talk about Chris Tanev too. I do want to mention one comment, okay? Because it has something to do with today's game and it's uh it's pretty funny okay so trevor somebody commented that if you are going to the game today and you are booing bo horvat horvat and this is trevor uh, this is something that trevor said on yesterday's episode yeah you should boo bo horvat okay sports are fun and this guy wanted more money and blah 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 boo bo horvat if you're one of those guys your parents didn't raise you right so how does that make you feel buddy because this guy's calling your mom and dad a joke well, it, it's funny that, um, yeah, first off, my mom and dad are, are fantastic people. And, you know, I'm not really a reflection of my parents. You know, I'm out there <laughs> doing my own thing, man. I'm a, I'm a 30-year-old man. I'm a, I'm a man. Okay? Hey. I'm a man. Hey. Well, guess what, okay? Yannick Hansen also came out today and said that the fans should boo Bo Horvat. This is an Woo! NHL player who spent time in NHL locker rooms coming out and saying that the fans should boo Bo Horvat. Yannick Hansen, again, he's not just some guy, some schmuck. Raised by mom and dad from wherever. This guy was a former NHL player uh, who's advocating for fans to boo Bo Horvat. So I think if Yannick Hansen's advocating for it, I sure as hell can advocate for it. Uh, uh-huh. Now, that being said, yeah, Kyle, you and I both at the game tonight, not sitting together. I'm going to be in the media booth, so I'm booing from the media booth. <laughs> Why okay, not, dude? Do it. That's Come just a professional, on, man. Bro. Come on. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing Ever, okay? If you were booing from the media booth, I would, you know what? Everyone should subscribe to the show. Because then it, it just tells the people that Trevor Beggs, even though he is for the people, but again, if he were to do that, he would really be for the people. It is Nikita Zadorov, though, for the people of Vancouver. I know you don't think so, and I'm excited to hear why you believe that, because I feel as if there is this feeling, this spirit in the air that the Canucks should be buyers, and this is something that they should do, and maybe they should do more of things like this, because of injuries like the one that we just heard about today. Carson Soucy out for eight weeks, six to eight weeks. This is this is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, so with Nikita Zadorov, again, one of the reasons we wanted to mention him, aside from the Soucy injury, is that, you know, before Soucy got injured, the Canucks were reportedly after this guy. Um, now there's obviously a number of teams after Zadorov, and, and, you know, on the surface, who wouldn't be, right? This is a six-foot-six Physical defenseman, not just a physical defenseman, but he's really like an old school physical player. Like Mm -hmm. not many guys throw the body around like Nikita Zadorov anymore. Uh, And not only that, but this guy can produce some offense as well. Um, So there's a lot to like about Zadorov's game. Again, this guy actually scored 14 goals last season. I would say probably a bit of an outlier. His career high before that was seven goals. 
Um, but again, there's stuff to like about Nikita Zadorov's game. Six foot six, 240 pound defenseman who can actually skate and move pretty well. It's kind of like if Nikita Tram can actually work out in Vancouver, you know. People thought Tram might be the Russian Chara, but uh, Nikita Zadorov is really a, an elevated version of what Tram could have been in Vancouver. Now, that being said, I'm not advocating for the Canucks to trade for this guy. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I think Nikita Zadorov has shown. Honestly, he's very similar to Carson Soucy, except maybe not quite as physical. But Zadorov's shown that he can excel uh, on a bottom pairing. But when you stick him in a top four, the results are mixed. And he's a player who takes more risk because of his physicality. Uh, his game is a bit bombastic. It's a bit all over the place. He does some things well, but he takes some risks in terms of chasing the head in the big play. That leaves his team exposed sometimes. Um, and, and again, he's been, he's feasted on smart on weaker competition, but he hasn't really done well, you know, in a top four role facing against the best guys every night. And this is a guy you're going to pay assets for. You know, the Canucks are probably if they wanted to trade for Zadorov, you're probably trading a guy like Bovillier or Garland, and then maybe attaching a draft pick to it. Wow, that's not a trade I would make if I was the Canucks. So, uh, yeah, I don't think the Canucks should target Zadorov. And you know, one interesting stat, and I'll shout out Harm from the Athletic on this, is that over the past couple of seasons. Um, Three, four defenders who have taken the most penalties per 60 are Ian Cole, Tyler Myers, Carson Susi, and Nikita Zadorov. So if you theoretically trade for Zadorov, you'd have four of the 10 most penalized defensemen per 60 on your team. Well, uh, and for a team, I know the Canucks penalty kill is better than it's been, but I don't know if that's a situation you want to be getting yourself to into come playoff time. You, you really think that's all Calgary would want in a trade that would involve Nikita or like a Chris Tanev is like Garland or Beauvillier slash an asset? And I feel as if if that's the case, the asset has to be pretty high, right? And you're shedding salary cap by shipping one of those guys out, and you're assuming that, again, the asset has to be high slash the only valuable piece going the other way in a trade. So I'm not comfortable at all with the Canucks even going through to a second-round pick, let alone a first-round pick, let alone a pot Colson right now. I feel as if the Canucks, again, one step at a time, it's not their year to do that. Now, all this being said, if they were to make a trade like that, be aggressive, trade another first or second or, you know, give up a prospect, they need to do it in line with something similar to Philip Aronik, somebody that they would consider extending yeah. for a long period of time. And I don't feel as if Nikita Zadorov is that guy. No, I don't think so either. Uh, I, I personally would not be extending him. I mean, he's making $3.75 million right now, likely looking for a raise, uh, depending on how he plays. I mean, that's this isn't a guy you want to pay $4 million plus to. I think even with Susie, I was skeptical on that. And again, these are similar players. Susie now making three point two five million. And the other thing to consider too is that you trade for Zadorov. It's another left shot defenseman. And I think we've seen pretty clearly that the Canucks do not want to play defenseman on their offside. So what happens when Susie comes back? You have Hughes, you have Cole, you have Susie, and you have Zadorov all on the left side. And sure, it's a great insurance policy, but is it worth trading Bovillier, Garland, and let's say a third round pick? I don't think so. I think what the Canucks need to be doing is targeting a right shot defenseman, someone to replace Mark Freeman, someone to play second pairing minutes. And guess what? That guy's on the Calgary Flames, okay? It's Chris Tanev, baby. It's Chris Tanev. If the Canucks are going to target a Flames defenseman, Chris Tanev makes a hell of a lot more sense than Nikita Zadorov. Um, I just think he really fits the mold of that kind of defensive shutdown defender that the Canucks need on that second pairing. Someone who can complement Cole pretty well. Someone who can kill penalties. Just um, a safe yeah, player. Chris just Tanev, a safe I don't, sorry to cut you yeah. off. I'm, I just get passionate about these things because, and I don't think Alvin and Rutherford would pay an alarming amount for a player that could be uh, mistake heavy, okay? This team does not need like the next good Rance and the next Lucas Spiza. You know, he has all the attributes, can look good, Spiza. has a couple of uh, uh, big plays, but overall, again, is mistake heavy. And this team does not need that. And that's why somebody like Chris Tanev uh, fits the mold for a player that. I would acquire two, and I don't know how many other guys like that are in the league that are available for trade because you need safe players on this team. This team, this team is still learning, learning a lot. They're still learning how to win games, and it's easier to win games when you take the safe route, right? Only play aggressive slash uh, take risks with your high-end offensive players. You don't need your bottom guys trying to do the most. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. Look at how much better the Canucks are when Tyler Myers is playing 15 minutes a game, 16 minutes a game. We already have one of those guys who – thinks he's that guy. We don't need another one of those guys. It's just the truth. And again, can you just go through how much you are willing to give up Trevor Beggs in, in trades that involve players like this? Uh, uh, just just walk walk over that for me because I'm just curious to see what you think the market is, again, for a player like Zadorov, Tanev, 
or other guys across the league? Yeah, I mean, for both Tanev and Zadorov, they're both rentals, right? Both of them are UFAs. Uh, contracts expire at the end of the season. I'm still kind of torn on what the Canucks should do because I think that the trajectory they're on right now, they're going to need to buy and they're going to need to add some depth to their blue line come playoff time. I love that we're already talking about playoffs, baby. It's only November 15th. Let's Dude, we're go. making the playoffs, baby. Um, yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, 93% according to The Athletic. Um, but yeah, I think you know the Canucks are going to have to probably move up Beauvillier or Garland to make the cap hit work. Uh, I don't see it either way unless they're really paying a premium for a team to retain salary. But I think like a second round pick, maybe in, in a rental trade, you're talking about a low end second round pick. Now the Canucks, it's worth noting, have traded away a lot of second round picks. So I'm not even sure what, what second round pick they have next year. I'd have to look that up quick. But that's mm-hmm. kind of what I'm thinking is you, you move up some salary to make it work. You move a second round pick. Um, the Canucks, again, it have to be a 2025 second round pick. Holy. They don't have a 2024 second round pick. So, and don't you think Calgary uh, would want yeah, more? Like, if, if Vancouver's the team that they're trading uh, with, like, it's like the premium is the minimum because again, you're talking about a Pacific Division team. And again, any team, any, yeah, I think any, that any trade that the Canucks make that involves like a second round pick or above, I hope that the Canucks can lock up that player that they're getting in return because that really matters. Well, one step at a time, one step at a time. Okay. Now, all this being said, this eight week injury again with Carson Soucy, I feel like I feel as if it guarantees it guarantees that a trade is going to be made because a I think you kind of have to reward the players slash show show Patterson that yo this is really serious. We're really serious about winning, and this is a good uh, a good way to prove that. And uh, they just got to be careful. They just got to be careful, man. They got to be careful that they get the right guy yeah. in the building. Uh, we, we've seen in recent history that their pro acquisition has been really good, and I hope that this trade that it, it it is it is inevitable it's going to happen the canucks are going to make a trade very soon 8 weeks is far too long for that thin of a blue line it's just the truth it's just the truth that carson Susie injury is a big injury it's a big injury he was playing strong he was playing solid he was playing better with myers too so a trade is going to be made but they got to make sure that they're hitting a grand slam with this one it's just the truth yeah, uh, curious to see what it looks like. But again, I kind of look at Luke, like Luke Shen got traded at the deadline for a third round pick. You know, Tana for a third or a second kind of makes sense to me. But then again, Beauvillier or Garland, if you are attaching a player like that, those guys have value too. You think so? We so? kind of just mentioned them. You think Beauvillier has value? I mean, value? I think they should have value. You think, think Beauvillier has value? value? I don't know about Beauvillier having value. Yeah, but here, my point is like you shouldn't be giving these guys away for nothing. Look, I mean, it definitely happens in the in the, in the cap strap world. We basically got Casey DeSmith for free, right? Don't kid yourselves. That trade was Tanner Pearson uh, and the third round pick attached for the Canadians to take on Pearson's salary. Was it a third or DeSmith a fifth? Was a really, it was a third in that trade. The fifth was for Lafferty. Oh, my bad, my um, bad. The, the, Smith was, the Smith was a throw-in in that trade. Uh, yeah. that, that's been pretty widely reported. So, again, sometimes you do get good guys for free. I mean, personally, I just would be hesitant if I was Alvin uh, and Rutherford about trading a guy like Bovillia Garland for free, basically, just to make the cap dollars work. Uh, but yeah, Kyle, to your point, I mean, Bovillier essentially got traded for free-ish once, right? I mean, uh, he was kind of a throw in that Horvat trade to make the cap work. So, um, But we'll see how desperate they get, right? If the blue line really starts to struggle, it's going to force Salvin Tan. And again, the whole league's watching. So it'll be interesting to see how they tread. And Kyle, to your point, the season is about uh, it's about the playoffs, but it's also about keeping Pedersen happy in Vancouver long-term. I know you touched on the contract situation yesterday. So we're both going to touch on it on the other side. Before I do that... I gotta let you know that a new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Chris Tanev could score 50 goals. What? The Canucks could hoist the Stanley Cup, and you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is my number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Chris Tanev, Nikita Zadorov, or Ian Cole will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Canucks fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. 
See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Okay, okay, you're back on another episode of Locked on Canucks. My name is Kyle Bowen. More importantly, that right there is Trevor Bags. Hey, more importantly than that, this is the show that gives you your Canucks every day. Hit the like and subscribe button if you did enjoy today's episode. And man, oh man, leave us a review on your favorite podcast and platform. Now, with all that being said, if you did not enjoy the show, I know we are all Canucks, but you don't got to be nice to us. Uh, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't hit the like button if you didn't enjoy the show. Save the world with one less lie at a time. I said it off the top and I wasn't lying. Again, I dreamt of moments like this and that's going to Canucks games. Canucks games, I'm sorry, alone, sitting at the top. Don't get me wrong. I got, I got some friends in the building too. We're going to meet up at the intermissions, but I'm sitting there alone and I think it's going to set the tone for the rest of my life because I'm on a pursuit to get season tickets. And I don't know if you're allowed to buy a one season ticket, but that's a, that's a, that's a path that I'm on, Trevor. A one? Oh, I see what like, you mean. Like, yeah, 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 like a like, single seat. For all forty-one games, yeah, that's that's. I'm, I'm sure if there's a spare seat there, you could, but yeah. uh, I don't know anyone personally that's done that. Um, but hey, man, you might want to do that at Pedersen signs long term, and and mm. I know you touched on it yesterday on the network. Go check out that. It was like a seven-minute episode. Kyle talking about the Pedersen contract, and uh, basically the situation is Patrick Alvin has said that he's been talking to Pat Persson, he's been talking to Pedersen's Swedish agent, and he wants this deal signed sooner rather than later. And that should be music to the ears of Canucks fans. Like, how, how far have we come from when we recorded on the opening night of the season, talking about all the bad vibes of Pedersen's contract, the Canucks wanting to wait, Pedersen wanting to wait, Garland's trade request. It was bad vibes galore as the season started. Susie's injury, Bluger's injury, and here we are. The Canucks are one of the best teams in hockey. And now apparently this contract might get done sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still... I'm still... I don't want to say pessimistic, but I have tepid optimism that could happen. Um, because again, things are going so well right now. But you know, you think about Pedersen and the leverage he has. He's got Pat Persson, one of the smartest smartest agents in the game. This guy is leading the league in points right now. Uh, he's got a lot of leverage in the situation. Um, you know, more leverage than your average RFA. So Kyle, I think you predicted, you know, eight years, a hundred million. Um, so that'd be twelve point five million a season, the Connor McDavid contract. You know, I would I would say if this contract gets signed. Uh, soon it's going to be that or above that. Ooh. But I think overall, if there's maybe some waiting done here, because I don't know if Patterson is going to score a 150-point clip the rest of the season. 120 would be pretty damn good. But there's just not a lot of guys who have who have made or or, or are making $12 plus million right now. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I understand it. I just think he's that good. And when I when I put the number way up there when it comes to the per year amount, I'm really trying to quote-unquote, manifest the fact that we're going to sign this guy to an eight-year deal. That's really important. I mean, look what happened a couple months ago. Austin Matthews did not sign an eight-year deal. You know what I'm saying? And that's cool and whatnot for him. In Toronto, maybe they're cool with that. It is what it is, right? But I think it's so, so important for a team that's going to have a lot of dead cap in a couple of years to make sure they got this guy locked up for eight years. For eight years. It's uh, like I said it would be a failure if they wouldn't be able to do that. And I'm going to stand by that because he is so important to the future of this team. And that's, that's obviously not saying much. That's the obvious. And I just want this city to have what we're having now for close to a decade. And it's a lot easier for that to happen. If they can lock up this guy again for eight years, it's just the truth. It's just the truth. Now, Trevor did allude to the episode I dropped yesterday. Even if you don't want to watch it, go drop a comment and predict the contract. Okay. Predict it in the comment below. In that video, not in this video. If you do it on the last video, uh, you'll qualify to win two t-shirts. Now, Trevor, I do want to say something to you. Maybe, yes, maybe, Pedersen would take less than 12 and a half. Maybe, just maybe, if him and JT Miller go out for dinner. And maybe JT Miller can BS a bit and be like, look, PD, the media doesn't know this. Nobody knows this on the team. But uh, I took less. I took less. I could have made 8.5, but I said, yo. I'll, t- I'll take eight for the betterment of the team. I know I'm creating a story here uh, and a narrative, but I feel as if the only way he can take less on a per year basis is if the tone has already been set. You know, maybe JT Miller did take a little bit yet less. Even if it was $500,000, that would go a long way. 
that's just a, a little theory in my mind. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, you know, one of the other things I want to bring up is just how few forwards have signed contracts for 10 plus million. And I know cap inflation, the cap's gone up, but uh, based on cap friendly, it looks like there's only 14 forwards or 14 contracts where guys have been signed at 10 plus million a season. Austin Matthews accounts for two of those. Uh, but since COVID hit, only five guys have signed contracts with 10 million or more per season. Five forwards, I should say, because uh, Darlene did sign at 11 million. But here, the five forwards who have signed contracts since COVID hit for 10 plus million are Barkov at 10 million, Jonathan Huberdo at 10.5 million, <laughs> Nathan McKinnon at 12.6 million, David Pasternak at 11.25 million, and Austin Matthews at 13.25 million. So we're talking about, you know, being 3.5 years since uh, the start of COVID hit and only five guys have signed contracts at 10 plus million a season. So Pedersen is going to be one of those guys. But sometimes I'm just wondering if he's going to be closer to David Pasternak, as we predicted before, like in that, again, I kind of predicted it a couple months back, every day is no, but, you know, Cap goes up to 87 million. He gets the Pasternak deal. It'd be 11.75 million as opposed to the 11.25 that Pasternak got. Okay. I know we love Pedersen in this market, but David Pasternak has been an absolute beast in the playoffs. The guy's been a heart candidate before. I mean, how much better is Pedersen than Pasternak? I think he's better, but I think they're both very similar uh, skill sets. Whoa. No, that's true. And Pasternak scores a lot of goals. He does his thing. I don't watch a lot of his actual game, like his actual film. I just see the highlights and, and the electrifying stuff. And I think there's this uh, notion from us that Pedersen is just such a complete player that he cannot be overpaid. There's no there's no way that's a, that's a possibility. And, and again, I keep throwing out the number. I'm going to say it again because I want this deal to be signed for eight years. Eight years. It's so, so important. Uh, that could really set us up really set us up, then it's going to be easier to sign Quinn Hughes in a couple of years. You know, just get the snowball rolling. Make sure Pedersen is a Canuck for life, and uh, we can continue uh, this this momentum. I mean, okay, I'll put this out there. You, you can leave a comment on this video regarding this question. If Pedersen takes less, a lot less, are you naming your next child, Elias? Because I might. I might. If Pedersen signs for $11 million over eight years, $88 million. He's realistically taken like a million and a half off his contract. Eight years from now, there's a good chance I'll have one child, right? One child. And if that's the case, I'm going to name him Elias. You can hold me to it. I'll, I'll still be here on Locked On Canucks. You can hold me to it. Elias Bowen, that's a great name. <laughs> Elias Bowen, there you go. Uh, I'll throw my prediction out there. I'm going to go I'm gonna go 12 million on the nose. Um, and then, you know, maybe Hughes signs something similar when his contract comes up, but I'm going to go mm -hmm. eight years, 12 million. That's $96 million contract total. And then whopping 4 million less than you predicted, Kyle. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, ironically, one of the highest paid Canucks in, in the coming years that uh, we might talk about him next, uh, in the final segment, <laughs> the Cam Neely, former Canuck of the week. Before we get to that, I got to let you know that you and I, we spend a lot of time talking together. We get fired up together on wins and losses, who starts and who sits. I'm thankful for that the connection that connection that we have. And today, I want our chat to be a little more personal. I just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. Whoa. Do you realize what that means? Bring on extended travel, bring on the next natural disaster or supply chain issue. You are covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can refill your generics for Cialis, Viagra, or Riva Teo prescription. And this is all possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code Locked On at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer has th had this to say about Jace. I am thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half just to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year's supply. I also ordered an antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you know uh, would like to get some peace of mind by having a year's supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. People, people, I'm gonna let you know again, okay? Why? Because I need to bring in uh, the podcasting listeners, okay? The people on the audio side of this relationship that you can get in on that contest as well, okay? That you want to predict the Elias Patterson contract and you want to do so because you want to win a couple of T-shirts regarding your Vancouver Canucks. Boom, bam! <laughs> You're at the right place, okay? Now you can do so by commenting 
on our last video, uh, the one where Elias Patterson looks like Santa Claus, or again, this is for you podcatchers on the audio side, DM us on Twitter. We'll put the link to that in the bio below. Predict the contract extension for Elias Patterson, and you'll be entered into a draw if you get the number right exactly to win a couple of t-shirts. Okay? Anyways, let's get back to the program. Okay, okay. We back, baby. Locked on Canucks, your Canucks every day. Given to you here. My name, Kyle Vallon. That right there is Trevor Beggs. And uh, yeah, man, I just saw this tweet from Taj. And I think he was paraphrasing slash quoting Rick Dollywall. And Dollywall saying, man, there's a lot of optimism regarding the, the Pedersen negotiations. Okay? It's going to happen, bro. Yeah, I, I mentioned this in the other video. Okay, we keep bringing, bringing up the other video that I dropped at 10 o'clock at night last night. Again, a seven-minute quick talk regarding Elias Pedersen. I called this, bro. Kind of, sort of. I wrote about this. How does it happen? How does, how does the Canucks, or how do the Canucks sign Pedersen before the end of the year? They got to have a strong October and an even stronger November, which we got to continue today against the Islanders. And before you know it, Christmas will come early for your Vancouver Canucks, and we will sign Elias Pedersen. So I'm excited, man. This is a, this is a perfect season, and I think the game tonight, man, I think it could – I feel as if if we win tonight in convincing fashion, there's going to be another stretch of 10 games where, we're really, where we really put the NHL on notice. Straight up. We can get a lot of juice from this game. And if we can win this game without Carson Soucy, I know Carson Soucy is the number five D-man on your Vancouver Canucks. He's just been playing so well, so clean, so smooth, and he was getting better. Again, it's going to bode well for that locker room. Get well soon, Carson Soucy. Am I over-exaggerating uh, this injury? Because I feel as if it's a really big one. Like, again, I said it 10 minutes ago. Like, the Canucks are making a trade ASAP because of this. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it's a, a massive injury. But that being said, I mean, Soucy and Myers have, have played fine together on that third pairing. I, I would even say they played well. Um, sometimes I feel like, we overrate bottom pairing defensemen, right? Like we're we're so into the nitty gritty of this team, you and I, and and you as well, listening to this show, uh, that you're like, oh, the 18 skaters, they all matter. Like you got to have depth, which is true, but sometimes we might just be over evaluating how impactful a, a bottom pairing defenseman is, which is what Carson Susi is right now. Uh, curious to see what Akito Hirose looks like. I know he started the season in Vancouver. Um, you know, he's a smart player, uh, and I think tonight is a tough test. Oh, it's a tough edge test against the New York Islanders. Not an incredibly offensive team. I think the tougher test is that he has to play with Tyler Myers. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, he, which he kind of played well in spite of last season, but his underlying numbers were putrid because him and Myers did spend a lot of time in their own zone. Yeah, it's going to be uh, somewhat of a new chapter. It's like eight weeks is a long time, and this is the uh, first bit of adversity this group has been uh, given. And again, more than curious to see how they... Take this, and uh, if they're able to do wonders tonight against the Islanders, just watch out. Watch out, NHL. The Vancouver Canucks are going to show you that they're for real. And uh, I'm I'm also curious about who is your Canuck of the week because I have not been thinking about this at all. I haven't really been paying attention to all the former Canucks. So uh, let's, uh, let's go down memory lane and uh, connect some dots. And again, former Canuck of the week. I don't want to say goodbye. All right, the Cam Neely, former Canuck of the week for this week. Uh, he's going to be one of the highest paid guys on the team in the years ahead. It's Oliver Ekman Larson. We talked about this guy a bit uh, when the Canucks and Panthers face each other uh, a couple weeks ago now. But Ekman Larson continues to put up points for the Florida Panthers, uh, and unbelievably so almost. I mean, uh, so get this, Cal. Oliver Ekman Larson has four goals in 15 games for the Florida Panthers. He had two goals last week. For the Florida Panthers, Paul Reckman Larson had two goals for the Canucks in all of last season in 54 games, and he got just pretty much had that same production this week. So, I mean, it, the guy's making the most of injury right now. Uh, seems to be playing well, and it, it does make you wonder, you know, how would Eichmann Larson have looked under Rick Talk? It was part of his demise, injury related. I think that's true to an extent, but my God, he was bad last season. Uh, even when Talkett showed up, he was bad, and Talkett yeah. was kind of decreasing his minutes now. 
We know he was dealing with an injury. He was never going to be worth that contract. He never should have been acquired in the first place. So you and I have said it, and I will stick by it. The Canucks made the right decision by buying him out. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting, to say the least, that he is playing very well in Florida and playing. He's playing. He's averaging over 22 minutes a game, which is kind of crazy. If OBL was still a member of the Vancouver Canucks, the Canucks would not be 11-3-1. and It's just the truth. He's too... Uh... He's too, like, mistake-heavy, and I know he's probably playing better in Florida, but it just wasn't going to work out in Vancouver. Vancouver's too tough of a market, man. The expectations are so high here when it comes to needing your players to get close to their value and how much they're being paid for, and rightfully so. You know, it's Vancouver. We care about hockey here, and I feel as if he wasn't able to live up to that, obviously, and he was never going to be able to live up to even half of that dollar amount. You know what I'm saying? So whatever he's doing right now in Florida it wasn't going to happen in Vancouver, regardless of how his off-season training went, how he's feeling, uh, how his injury healed up. I don't. I just don't think it was ever going to work out with the Vancouver Canucks. And just having Myers and him playing within a 60-minute game of ice hockey for your Vancouver Canucks would have just been, again, too, too mistake-driven. And uh, it goes back to the top of the show. And I, I want to know what other D-men are out there that are safer bets for this team to acquire because they are going to acquire D-men. Very, very soon. So we talked about Zadorov and Tanev, and maybe throughout the next couple of weeks, maybe we'll have some guests on. Uh, maybe we'll talk about the list of D-men that are available because the Canucks, man, Susie, eight weeks? This hurts. This hurts. And they're going to need some help. They really are, okay? Anywho, your Canucks every day. Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs. Had to do it again because uh, we're living the dream, and Man, oh, man, I'm living the dream today. Going to a Canuck game alone. Maybe you'll see me on the Jumbotron. If that's the case, I'm taking off my shirt. Begsy, sign us out. There we go, buddy. <laughs> there we go. And uh, it's uh, it's too bad that you're so negative on OEL because I'm thinking now is Susie injured? You know, the, the Canucks go out and trade back for all of oh! or what? <laughs> <laughs> right? Damn. Okay, now you're talking. There we go. Crazy. My, now Ekman Larson and Myers could be on the third pairing. Okay, uh, okay. Enough, enough of that. Enough of that. Okay, let's let's stop this nonsense right now. Let's get out of here. Uh, again, Kyle and I both at the game tonight, both at the Raj for the first time this season. Not sitting together, uh, but my brother. If you're around when I'm done my post game recap for Daily Hive, we definitely got a link up. Oh yeah. Uh, but that's for later. For now, we got to get out of here. Okay. Uh, so shout out to the everydayers, the occasional listeners, the first time listeners, and the new subscribers. We appreciate each and every one of you for listening, tuning in, and making Locked On Canucks what it is. Show it to your family, your dogs, your cats, and all your pets as well. Coming up later this week, we'll talk about the recap of Boo Horvat's return uh, to Vancouver. Uh, also got a couple other games coming up in short order. Canucks play the Flames on Thursday, uh, play the Kraken on the weekend, some Pacific Division a heat, baby. Let's go. Let's keep this thing rolling. But for now, again, we got to get out of here. So I'm Trevor Beggs. That guy's Cal Bowen. And you've been listening to Locked On Canucks. Dude, we're going to meet at Amsterdam Cafe at 11 o'clock, okay? <laughs>